And welcome back to Seattle along with Sonny Six Killer and Mark Rip and I'm Brian Davis. That late touchdown is an obvious pick, but Rip, what did you consider as the defining moment for the Cougs? Well, I think the defining moment for the Cougs is their defense and the ability to set the tone for the game. That in itself, I think, was a, was a key factor today. And Sonny for the Huskies? Well, they weren't able to stop the Cougars on third down. You look at Alex Brink repeatedly hitting the tight end or another receiver for a key first down. And I think that really hurt the Huskies all afternoon. Well, as you might expect, a jubilant bunch of Cougars walking off the field here this afternoon after Washington State's victory. And we always believe, man. You can tell by the scores of our game, man. We hit it to the end, man, and it's time to board it out. What's it final like to get one of these wins? Oh, it feels good, but, but it feels especially good beating them two years in a row. We got the streak now. I just want to say I'm sorry about what happened in the middle. Uh, I don't know who started it or it doesn't matter, but, you know, our kids are out there. Uh, on that W, they shouldn't do that. That started a few years ago. It's our place, and, and you can't do that. It'll never happen again, I promise you that. You win the football game, then there is no celebration by the opponent. We missed our opportunity to do that. We did not take advantage of that. Uh, their celebration, whether some will say it, it was prompted a response from us, there's no place in college football for that. No place in the Husky program for that. We did it, man. It's for the seniors, man. It's for the seniors. It feels good to send them off on this note. As of right now, I'm telling everybody, the Cougars own Washington. Washington is our state. Until the Huskies prove they can take it back. And they ain't going to prove that because it's over. It's, it's over. That six-year trial, it's a wrap. And Rip winning this game makes it easy for the Cougars to come back into the gym for those off-season workouts, <laughs> doesn't it? Great win for the Cougs. I tell you, the defense set the tempo. Trend and Harvey finish it off. A lot of happy faces in Pullman. Sonny, where does this leave the Huskies now for the offseason? Well, a lot of work to do, and i tell you right now what's going to happen, there's no rest for the weary. Tomorrow they get on the recruiting trail and they hit it hard and try and get this team improved where they need to be for next year. When we come back, Brad Adam will tell you about the best athlete in the state of Oregon. His name is Jordan Kent. That's straight ahead coming up on the Civil War Halftime Report brought to you by your Northwest Chevy dealers. It's right now on FSN Live. Presented by your Northwest Chevy dealers. Hey everybody, Cameron Wong and Matt Morrison for FSN Live Bragging Rights. And there are parties in both Pullman <laughs> and Eugene tonight. And I'm going to try to make every one of them. Well, somehow I suspect the uh, Palouse types are still lighting it up in Seattle as well. <laughs> Conquest and controversy as the Cougars and Huskies collide. And a dominant performance from the Ducks at Outson Stadium. Along the way, we'll hear from the Oregon contingent that can't wait. Children, we got both teams out there and a lot of fans, and this thing and, uh, might get a little ugly. It's already a little ugly. You got, you got Cougars throwing blows at Huskies. Huskies responding. I am very disappointed uh, to the point of being embarrassed by the aftermath of that football game. It is not, um, there's no place for that in Husky football and or college football. It doesn't matter whether one thought it was prompted or not. There is no place for that. I just want to say I'm sorry about what happened in the middle. Uh, I don't know who started it or it doesn't matter, but you know, our kids are out there uh, on that W, they shouldn't do that. That started a few years ago at our place and, and you can't do that. It'll never happen again, I promise you that. But uh, this has always been a very class act, and, uh, and we want to keep it that way. And forgive me for my soapbox, but I think football, and I've said this on some occasions, is man's greatest game, and I truly believe that. I don't think anything compares, not chess, not boxing, not uh, rugby. I think this is man's best game. It involves all the ingredients that you see in any other sport, and no one else can do that. And for it to be played the right way, it has to be played by tough-minded, tough-bodied young men that play the game with the greatest competitive uh, spirit, but with the greatest respect for their competitors. And I'm not addressing Washington State. That's not my team. I'm addressing the Huskies. And the aftermath of that ball game bothers me because that doesn't speak to the way college football and the game of football should be treated. Well, this is what happened in the Apple Cook game itself. First quarter, Alex Brinks looking for Greg Praetor. 30 yards, first touchdown of the game. That made it 7-0 Cougs. But the Huskies, they would answer. With Kenny James, a little razzle-dazzle right here. Halfback pass to Sonny Shackelford to check out, check out the catch. Over two defenders, 
65 yards the other way, good for the touchdown. It is tied up at sevens after that. We jump to the third quarter. Dogs down 13-7 now. Isaiah Standback finds Craig Chambers one-on-one -on -one for the touchdown. The Huskies take a 14-13 lead, but who's come back? Jerome Harrison, the nation's leading rusher. 20 yards the other way into the end zone. Two-point attempt failed, so it's 19-14 Coops. Fourth quarter, James Sims up the middle. Three-yard touchdown. Dogs convert the two-point conversion. The Huskies take a three-point lead. Men to half the play, bring the Trandon Harvey on the screen pass. Huskies lose leverage, 39 yards on the touchdown. Cougs win. That would be the game winner. And after the game, Cougs supposedly stomped on the W. And the Huskies, well, they're not having that. Well, you hate to see the final 26-22. WSU wins the Apple Cup in Seattle for the first time since 1997. Harrison, 207 yards on 36 carries. He has 1,900 yards on the season now. And that, of course, leads the nation. The Cougs have won two straight Apple Cups versus the Huskies, and they haven't done that since 1985. Here we go, baby. Finally, man, we, we hung in. We've been hanging in all year and playing close and uh, finally made the big play when we had to make a play and uh, got the touchdown, got the lead. But I thought they battled. They battled really hard. So it, it was a great ball game. All right, on now to Eugene, all painted up for the Civil War. Packed house and an electrifying finish as Alex Brink hits Trant and Harvey for the touchdown. With a minute and change remaining, Washington State escapes Husky Stadium with a four-point victory. Brian Davis with Sonny Sixkiller and Mark Rippon. You take a look at the way things went for the Cougars today. They survived a number of issues, turnovers, three missed field goals, but they prevail rip in the end. Well, and one of the keys I mentioned earlier, uh, Brian, was the fact that somebody had to step up and make a play. Trendon Harvey was a goat earlier on the punt return, and lo and behold, he becomes the hero right at the end. The Huskies continued six to battle all day long. They were dominated statistically. In the end, though, the Cougars were able to move the ball late in the game as Washington had trouble, amongst other things, accounting for the tight end. Well, you know, throughout the ball game, Washington State did a great job of converting on third down, and certainly in that last drive, the Huskies weren't able to get out on Cody Boyd, the tight end, with some crucial first downs, and in and of uh, costing the Huskies big time. Cougars in peril of going 0-8 in the league for the second time, and well, they did it in 1998, so not too long ago, but they pulled that out of the fire rip. Where does this leave the Washington State program in Bill Doba? Well, I think bragging rights and recruiting rights and respect. You know, once you play University of Washington, you always better be on your game no matter what's at stake. And I think, you know, for the Huskies uh, side of the ball, Ty Willingham's got a lot of great things going for him. We wish them well, but uh, for us, that was a big move. Tough way to finish for Washington, but six, the consensus is here on the cut that Willingham did a terrific job in his first season at the helm at Washington. Hey, there's no question, Brian. I think one thing he's done, and his kids locally and in, in the state of Washington, they, re they redshirted kids from last year that they recruited from the state of Washington. And the way he set that program from the foundation up, He's done an outstanding job, Brian, and it's heading in the right direction, just like Rip said. Thumbs up for the Cougars for the first time in better than be 20 years now. I'll tell you when the Apple Cup, of course. Beating your cross-state rival can do wonders for turning any season around. Top it off with a dramatic comeback in the fourth quarter, and all of a sudden, it's a season to remember. Kara Capuano has more from Husky Stadium. Seven Pac-10 losses, five coming by four points or less. The Washington State Cougars finally get their one Pac-10 victory of the season, and it comes by four points. One win, and it erases all the rest of the troubles. We did it, man. It's for the seniors, man. It's for the seniors. It feels good to set them off on this note. As of right now, I'm telling everybody, the Cougars own Washington. Washington is our state. Until the Huskies prove they can take it back. And they ain't going to prove that because it's over. It's, it's over. over. That six-year trial, it's a wrap. This has been a team that's battled back from a lot of things. You know, we've, we've had tough losses, been able to battle back, and, you know, we just had that mentality that we're going to get it done, and we did today. I feel wonderful, man. You know, for the seniors, you know, Trent and Harvey made a big play, and he's a senior. You know, that, I think that's awesome for the seniors. You know, the win. We had a bad season, but we go out like this, you know, good. We always believe, man. You can tell by the score of our game, man. We hit it to the end, man, and it's time to pull it up. What's it finally like to get one of these wins? Oh, it feels good, but, but it feels especially good beating them two years in a row. We got the streak now. 
So the 2005 Apple Cup may not really be characterized as a crisp Granny Smith, but rather something that the witch cooked up for Snow White. Regardless, it was the one victory the Cougars needed to redeem their season, and quarterback Alan's Brink making history today, becoming the first ever Washington State quarterback to win the Apple Cup in back-to-back -back years. Let's send it back to you. All right, Kara, thanks. This rivalry report brought to you by KeyBank. Achieve anything. And it was Alex Brink and the Cougar offense that achieved a lot this afternoon, as they have all season. Nearly 500 yards of offense and twice as many first downs as you dub. Meantime, Washington's shot at finishing the season with two straight wins and momentum going into Tyrone Willingham's second year was wiped out with that late TD by the Cougars. The Huskies finished with just one conference win, and the seniors go out with a heartbreaking loss in the Apple Cup. It's a tough loss, and everybody's kind of hanging their head, uh, especially the seniors out there. Uh, nobody wants to go out like that, so, um, you know, it's not the way that we wanted to finish, but, you know, that's sometimes the way things go. I mean, it hurts. I mean, you know, you want to do everything in your, you know, your ability to, to help the team win, you know what I'm saying, and, and doing that, you want to send out the seniors right, you know, it hurts. Everybody's in there disappointed with, you know, the, the, some of the plays they didn't make, like I dropped that pass. I, I said sorry to a few of the seniors. I, I didn't, I mean... You don't want to send anybody out like that. Nothing I can do about it, though. The whole year, um, we had a lot of opportunities to win games. And this was just another one where couldn't quite get it to go our way. I think the younger guys are going to be able to step up and learn from, learn from uh, this whole season. Um, we have, they have a lot of leaders coming back, and I'm excited to watch them play next year. On the way, the ultimate case of what have you done for me lately? The Cougs' Trandon Harvey was growing goat horns for, after his third quarter fumble. But talk about a recovery, and we certainly will. And Duck fans got a glimpse of the future on offense today. Jonathan Stewart and Dennis Dixon, very impressive. We'll have more Civil War.